I'm Cass Kozlowski. I had the opportunity of collaborating with Diana McCain, Gigi Livrant, and the Colchester Historical Society on one of their new exhibits for the spring and summer season entitled Emerging from the Shadows, Colchester's School for Colored Children, 1803 to 1840. It gave us an opportunity to go a little deeper into the background on a part of Colchester's history that perhaps folks might have some knowledge about, but actually may have some misconceptions or may not have any knowledge about. So again, we invite you throughout the summer season to come join us. Um, the exhibit includes artifacts actually from the Colchester Historical Society's collection and also on loan from the Bacon Academy trustees. So we've got some amazing primary documents that um, give some solid background on how exactly the Colchester School came to be. Um, mm -hmm. Um, just go. We're just rolling. Go. Just go. Uh, um, we, we, Diana and I thematically tried to break it down so that we could put it into a broader context. So it's not a matter of that something occurred in 1804. There was obviously a run up to that. So we've covered uh, introductory panels on what the, what the situation was for African Americans not only here in Colchester, but throughout New England, what the demographics were, what their opportunities were economically and socially. Um, and despite the fact that education was available to African American children, not only here in Colchester as early as the 1770s, but many communities throughout Connecticut made that available. However, it was not a perfect situation for those black children. Racism, um, on the part of the educators and other children. Oftentimes they would have been demeaned in the classroom. So despite the fact that the colored school here in Colchester, in essence, segregated them out of the white population of students, it actually provided, if not an equal education, and some, for some instances and some students, it provided a better education for them. Um, it all came about when Pierpont Bacon passes on and leaves through his will $35,000 for the establishment of the Bacon Academy. Um, that in turn, the committee that decided to establish this new school that would be built here on the green, they established levels of education. There was the, the academy level, the secondary level, and then there was actually a common school or a district school level. The committee, however, decided, and this was not, Pierpont Bacon never made this decision, it was made by this committee after he had passed on, that black children would not be allowed into that district school level. They would need to go to school in what had been the district school for the, for the first society here in Colchester, in a separate school. So that's where the, or the, the uh, school for colored children actually comes about. Um, as time progresses, we know that individuals like Prince Saunders, who was here living in Colchester, becomes one of the students at the, at the school. He goes on to um, receive an education that allows him to become heavily involved in, in um, uh, government. He works overseas. He, he gets a fine reputation for himself in his own right. And all of that comes about by the education he got here in Colchester. We try to see if we could answer questions on why exactly the school was established and then why in 1840 it closed. I mean, we, the determination was, and this is again when you have a sub, you have subject matter like this, that there are, it's, which is partially why we titled it Emerging from the Shadows. These are people, these are parts of a population that haven't been discussed and a lot of that documentation isn't still available, so you have to do it through conjecture. The conjecture is that by 1840, the attitude towards this type of a school and education for black individuals had become to be, or it, had, it started to become a heated topic. By then, the abolitionists, the anti-slavery societies were coming into their own, and the discussion on both sides of that coin on what and where blacks fit into a broader society, it all really comes to a head. So we finish off the, the kind of a timeline of themes through the exhibit on, to the best of our determination, why the school might have closed. 
So what we were hoping with is that through the exhibit, it's not a matter of getting solid answers to anything, but a lot of the hope was that to get the storyline out there, that more information can be added to this, this project, this um, research that's being done in here in town as time goes on. So we invite all of you to come through the exhibit sometime this summer. Um, and if you have any questions, I'm sure the Historical Society would like your input, comments, or concerns.